Hi, this is BK Hobby, and this is another video I made for you in the OpenHab Basics series. If you've watched all of the OpenHab Basics videos so far, we got through this entire diagram of OpenHab concepts, from bindings and things they support, to channels that control those things, items that are linked to the channels, to user interfaces and rules that display or change the state of the items. But to keep things moving and avoid confusion, I skipped over the topic of persistence in my items and links video. Now it's time to go back and show you why persistence is so useful and how to get it to work for you. So why is persistence such an important tool? Because it stores the state of your items in non-volatile memory. That is, your item states can be persisted between restarts of OpenHab instead of starting up in their default state. If you've ever wondered why your switches or other items don't reflect the current state of your device when OpenHab restarts, it's because you don't have persistence set up. Besides storing item states between restarts, persistence is very useful in some other situations. For example, when you want to display a chart of temperatures or other data from your sensors, you need to store or persist the sensor values so they can be used as data points on the graph. You can also use the historic values in your rules, for example this rule that calculates the daily minimum and maximum temperature values. So like with all other OpenHab add-ons, you need to install a persistence add-on before you can use it. And if you check out the persistence section under add-ons, you might be overwhelmed by all the different services available. All of these services are good options, but some are better for specific uses or have specific requirements. Let me just give you an idea of which of these you might want to set up and for what purpose. I'll show you with the specific examples of how I use persistence in my OpenHab system. For most of my basic persistence needs, I use the RD4J service or Round Robin Database for Java. The RD4J service is very lightweight. You don't need to install anything else besides the add-on and it's very good at storing series of single values. Because of this, it's perfect for creating charts within OpenHab or for storing the set points for switches or dimmer levels. I use storage items to adjust all the light settings for my dynamic lighting scenes. You can watch a video about those by clicking the link above. And I use persistence so I don't lose those set points when my Raspberry Pi running OpenHab loses power or restarts. So RD4J is great for these use cases, but there is one specific case where it fails. As I said, RD4J is great at storing single values for an item. Most items are like that. For example, the switch items are either on or off, and dimmer items store a percentage value for the dimmer level. But there are items that store more than one discrete value for their state. Here, look at this family lamp color item. For the color item, I can adjust its hue, saturation, or brightness. And those value states are all stored within the same color item as discrete states. Our D4J persistence does not deal with this well at all. It will not store the color item state correctly. For that, you need a persistence service that's able to store what's called key value pairs of states. For those items that store multiple values in one item state, or if you don't need to store a time series of data, the MapDB persistence service is a great option. It's another lightweight persistence service, which does not require installing anything other than the add-on itself, and it is able to persist things like these color items. I use the MapDB persistence service a lot to store all of my LED strip settings, as well as other items for which I don't need historical state. The thing to consider about the MapDB persistence service is that it only stores the latest state for each item. Because of that, it is not a usable persistent service for charts. Speaking of charts, I've shown you these Grafana pages on my Hat Panel UI before. Grafana can use data from several databases to build very pretty charts or graphs. However, by far the easiest way to use Grafana with OpenHab is through the InfluxDB persistent service. The InfluxDB persistent service connects to an Influx database server to store the item states. Grafana connects to the same Influx database server to collect the data and present it in a graph format. Because it requires an external database, 
the Influx persistent service isn't as easy to start working with as RRD4J or MapDB. But if you decide to use Grafana charts in your OpenApp system, you will need to use the Influx persistent service for the most straightforward interface between OpenApp and Grafana. So I hope this gives you an idea of which persistent services you want to use and why. But how do you configure a persistent service once it's installed? For persistence in OpenApp 2.0, you need to use text-based configuration. The configuration files live under your OpenApp config folder within the persistence directory. Each persistence service needs to have a .persist file created for it. As you see, I have three .persist files for my RRD4J, MapDB, and InfluxDB persistence services. So let's look at a copy of my actual RRD4J persistence configuration file. Within the .persist file, there are two important sections you need to create the strategy section and the items section. In the strategy section, you define the different methods for storing your item states. For example, for charts, you might want to store a temperature value every minute or every hour, depending on what level of granularity you want in your chart. You should consider how often your data needs to be stored because it will have an effect on how often OpenHab writes to the RD4J database file on the disk or SD card. You might want to store the temperature value every minute like I do, but only store the heating oil tank level every day, for example. You can set up your own strategies here using different cron timer strings for whatever time period you need to store your data at. The default strategy I've configured here is every change, and this one will obviously only write the item state into memory when it actually changes. In the items section is where you actually list the items or groups of items you want to persist using this persistent service and tie them to the proper strategy. This is where combining your items into well-defined groups really pays off. You can list groups of items to apply the persistent strategy to the entire group of items, and you can also use the wildcard asterisk symbol to apply the strategy to multiple groups with a similar name. For example, all my light items will be persisted on every change by listing this lights group with an asterisk. Keep in mind, and if this is the only thing you remember from this video, it's very important and easy to miss, that the wildcard asterisk symbol only works for group names. It does not work for item names. You need to list each and every item you want to persist separately here, or add it to an existing group and persist the group item. Separate the groups and items with commas, and use a colon to apply the correct strategy to that line. For this first line, I apply the every minute strategy, since these are my chart items. For the second and third, I apply the default every change strategy, since I really only want to persist those items when they receive a new value. The final important setting for each item persistence list is restore on startup. If you add this to your persistence definition line, your item states will be restored when OpenHab starts up. Without the setting, the item state will be stored per your persistence strategy, but the item state will not be reset when OpenHab restarts. If you'd like to see a sample persistence file that you can modify for your own use, just check out my GitHub repository for all of my OpenHab configuration files. You'll be able to download the files that you need and see how I set up my persistence strategies, groups, and items. And if you want to learn more about persistence right now, there's a few other resources. One of them is the actual OpenHab persistence documentation site, shown here. But I also highly recommend reading this article from David at smarthomeblog.net. David writes excellent informational articles and explains persistence in a very readable format, including how to install persistence services and how to configure them. He also has a great article on OpenHab persistence and rules, which is something I only lightly touched on in this video. Thank you for watching the OpenHab Basics videos. I hope this one gave you an idea of what persistence is and how to use it in your OpenHab system. If you liked the video, please subscribe and share with others. Thanks for watching BK Hobby, and until next time.